that would have been the hydrogen generator. I was just starting to tinker back in 2010 and uh, interested with how things work. The hydrogen generator, the HHO generator, was the first thing that I built. I actually made it out of PVC and split water, water into the hydrogen and oxygen gases and used to play with it in front of my house. And That was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun and that's what got me thinking about the tutorials. Also the fire piston was probably one of the uh, next things on the list, starting a fire by compressing air very quickly. You did ask about the DIY electromagnetic flashlight. That was actually after the hydrogen generator. I probably had produced about 20 videos before I did that flashlight, but it appears on the very first video on my channel because I actually went back and deleted a lot of the videos that I had, almost all of them, because uh, that was kind of just at home on a handy cam, not very professional. I didn't take the King around him seriously until about two years after I started posting little Mickey Mouse tutorials. And that electromagnetic flashlight was the only one that I left up out of all those. I've always liked making videos. I think ever since I was 20 I applied to go on Fear Factor, the TV show, and they had me put together an application video. So I'd always uh, taken videos of different parts of my life, very active with parkour, whitewater rafting, and skydiving. And so I made a little compilation video of some of those sequences. And, and that's when I kind of really enjoyed the video editing. I had used Adobe Premiere and made a fun little video. But as far as these kinds of videos, I'd say watching MacGyver with my dad is what got me really interested in the way a person could think about resources at his fingertips and constitute them in a way that would solve problems on the spur of the moment. I really liked that idea. Even though it was fictional, I thought uh, it was very inspiring to see if that really could be done in the real world. Okay, well I'm going to talk about the Backyard Metal Foundry because when I was first prototyping with that, I would got some metal from a scrap yard. Uh, I went in and basically bought bats back scrap metal. I was going to try and melt down aluminum. I had seen a couple of rough videos on the internet of people melting aluminum, but it wasn't very popular. There wasn't much information at all. I built a metal foundry and I tried melting down this stuff, but rather than just turning it into liquid metal, it kept uh, lighting on fire and then burning an extremely bright white light. It looked like looking straight into the sun, and then the leftover residue would just be this crumbly ash not molten metal whatsoever. Uh, I did about three different prototypes of metal foundries and got the same result every time and was really frustrated. It wasn't until after consulting some pyrotechnician friends and uh, some experts in the field we did some tests on the metal and found out it was actually magnesium and not aluminum. Which is very difficult to tell because they look exactly the same. So my first tests with melting metal were melting magnesium <laughs> and not aluminum. Once I put aluminum in it was no problem and we got the results I was looking for and that's when I went on to build my series on a backyard metal foundry. So yeah, I learned about magnesium. Ideas come from everywhere. I've got four boys. Um, they're always very busy exploring life and usually when they stumble across something that's interesting we'll see if we can build that out in a way that uh, is interesting to adults as well. You know, For example, one of my kids pulled a piece of PVC tube out of the garbage can once and asked what we could do with it and to me it looked like a blowgun so we made a blowgun and we made some little darts out of sticky notes and nails and we invented the blowgun, the laser sighted blowgun project which I think now has about 17 million views. So that just came out of the garbage can, literally. Other ideas are from my childhood. My dad uh, was kind of an outdoorsman, he was a survival man. He would take us out in the woods and teach us how to use a knife to basically build anything. We'd make our own rope, we'd make our own shelters. We caught two wild horses with a horse trap that we made out of trees and ropes. And so he was always very inventive. He would build skunk traps out of paint cans and uh, uh, he would build water heaters with five gallon buckets and some tubing and some copper coil. So I had that as a kid growing up. I, he was also a scout leader for 20 years. So he was always like in that frame of mind with uh, being prepared, being self-reliant. Outside of that, I think, you know, ideas you see on TV, on the internet, uh, things that just people talk about. I'm constantly open to just ideas that are floating around and then seeing what we can do with them. So it really comes from everywhere and I think where I excel is taking ideas that most people don't know much about or don't act on and then finding ways to modify them and take action on them in ways that really haven't been done before, really out of the box. Depends what kind of hobbyist. You know, we do everything from rocketry to you know homemade pyrotechnics to electronics and everything in between. So. A hobbyist getting started, I think some of my favorite tools are my power drill, pair of pliers, electrical tape, 
and woodworking is pretty safe as well. So, you know what, the way that I started, honestly, was just to get, uh, I would just go in the classified ads and I'd find things that people were giving away, whether it was a VCR or a TV, and I would bring that home. A lot of them were for free. You could find them in the free section of the classifieds, and then I would literally just take them apart, undo all the screws, you know, look at it, get on the internet and find out if there were any risks of doing that, and then I'd get inside and look at the components and just teach myself what the parts were made of. So I think anyone who wants to learn how things work, the best thing to do is just find one for low cost or free and take it apart and try and figure out how it works, cross-referencing Wikipedia and videos on YouTube. And as far as my videos go, I think a really good one for a first-time tinkerer would be making a desktop crossbow. I call it the Assassin's Micro Crossbow, collaboration with Sonic Dad. That was just using popsicle sticks and hair clips to make a uh, little crossbow that shoots uh, flaming matches across the room. Well, I should say outside. Um, it's very fun, you know, it's hands-on, it gets you thinking. There's like the mechanical concept to it, but it's really low cost and easy materials to use. So definitely a micro crossbow. We use the metal foundries quite a bit. Uh, Lego gummies are still a big hit. We have those with the kids all the time. So all the molds that we've made, we use quite a bit. Um, so like the different silicone molds. I know I've made some different tools like spot welders and arc welders. I do pull those out from time to time when I need them. But I would say the thing that I use the most is the metal foundry, but the only reason why is because we use that a lot to make new videos. They all have their different use in their different space. I don't use them like all the time. I just use them when I need them, but there's a lot of things that I use. So almost everything in the videos I still have somewhere around my house or in a storage shed. Okay, I think I said my power drill. I think is a must. Electrical tape and uh, I'd say like a hacksaw and a pair of like a, a pair of pliers but the whole set of pliers so your channel locks your diagonal cutters your lineman pliers they all have different purpose the needle nose pliers I think you need those four at least to, to kind of get through everything and then of course with your power drill you're gonna have your um, your bit set on there as well so you can use it for uh, screwing things in and out and out that comes in handy when you're taking microwaves apart so yeah I think those are the essentials I use a uh, Mac. Uh, let's see. I use. I have an iMac, but I think for most of my stuff right now, I have an editing team. They're all on iMacs as well. We use Adobe Premiere Pro. We're on the Creative Cloud, so everything gets produced through that. And uh, we use Photoshop and uh, Adobe Audition for working some of the sound editing. I'm kind of out of the loop on the tech world. I have a team for that, <laughs> so maybe there's things that they're excited about. I personally love the Mavic Pro. Just the whole flying camera concept at an affordable price and very portable to me is, is super cool and it definitely serves a purpose. I think faster computers are great and I also think uh, you know some of the tech that we use are online services like Dropbox where we can transfer large amounts of data between editors remotely. So just being able to connect the world through a little internet line has been pretty fantastic. So I think that's probably the best tech is just faster transfer of information. We have a lot. We actually have over 800 projects on our list right now, and it keeps growing exponentially. Um, so I can't tell you which ones we have because there's so many, and I, I actually don't know anymore because I've got a team who's uh, who's handling that. Um, but some some ones that I'm looking forward to are making pedal-powered generators. You know, being able to pedal a bike and actually generate electricity, and um, a biogas generator. You know, being able to take manure and turn it into uh, a biogas that you can use to generate electricity, warm your house, run an electrical generator, um, provide light. You know, biogas is pretty cool. It's really sensitive though because they're living organisms. So here's one that's kind of fun. We actually made an ocarn ocarina out of clay. I think that's from Zelda. It's a little clay ocarina. Uh, it's like a little flute or a pipe that you can play. Sculpt it out of clay and we'll probably fire that into ceramics as well. We're also doing a Heart of Tafiti candy. It's a, it's actually a green candy that glows in the dark, and it's from the movie Moana. It looks like the Heart of Tafiti. We made a mold for it. Heart of Tafiti suckers, uh, and they actually glow in the dark. So I think that's pretty cool. We also did some fun experiments setting snowballs on fire, so we got a flaming snowball tutorial coming up. Right now it's just my family. I'm actually trying to push away from hobbies and just spend more time being present with my family, being a dad of four kids, being a husband to my wife, and just being more available. So I've actually worked really hard the last 
seven years uh, pushing the channel, pushing the hobbies. So it's kind of like stepping away from that now and just being more available and having more space. I'm also right now building a seminar that will teach how we've created this YouTube channel to the point where it's at and how we can uh, teach other people to do something similar. You know, because realistically we, we went zero to nine million subscribers in about five years. And so we've learned a lot of things along the way I think that we can teach. So that's next step.